be human beings, they cannot live in isolation. They need society. What should be the basis of the unity of the society? Color of the skin, race? No. Language? No. Faith tradition? No. There is one thing which is, which is common. We are all perishable. If I remember correctly, otherwise Swamiji will correct me. Samam Pashyan hi Sarvatra. And the, uh, the last line is uh, uh, Vinashyat Suva Vinashyantam Ya Pashyati Sa Pashyati. One who sees the imperishable in the perishable is the one who really sees. What does that mean? That every one of us who is perishable, we are changing all the time. There is something in us which is imperishable. Na jayate miriyate va kadachi, naim bhutva bhavita vana bhuya. Ajo nitya shashvatoyam purano, na hanyake hanyamani shari. There is something in us, in each one of us, which does not take birth, which does not die, which is imperishable, which cannot be burned down, which cannot be drowned in water, which is imperishable. So our sages, our thought leaders, not now, now the whole world is becoming pluralistic. Everybody is saying, talking about inclusiveness, mankind is one family, therefore the diversity should not come in the way of unity. But our thought leaders, thousand years back, they decided that the civilization shall be defined by ek atmuta. Atma shall be the defining principle. And that is what? Okay. So, I won't take a lot of time. So, I find it so powerful. And particularly when I'm, when I'm speaking to the young crowd, I always refer to Swami Vivekananda who said, he said, what is the purpose of life? Pursuit of happiness? Generally people believe that the purpose of life is pursuit of happiness. Then he says, if that is the summum and bonum of your, that is the purpose, whole aim of your life, then what will prevent you from making others unhappy to secure your own happiness? Who will prevent you? Nobody can prevent you. Then what is the, what people ask, then what according to Swami Vivekananda is the purpose of life? He said, Purpose of life is pursuit of knowledge. Tapas adhyayi militam ever devoted to the pursuit of knowledge. Why knowledge? Because knowledge is something which gives you capability. You develop the capacity to see the underlying unity behind apparent diversities. What you, if each one of us who is sitting in the, who is attending this meeting, our faces are different. Our thinking may also be different. Our responses to a particular situation may also be different. Then why we are sitting together? We are sitting together because these diversities, these differences 
are only superficial apparent. And these differences do not last. I was not in my face, did not look the same when I was 10 years old, when I was 20 years old, when I was 30 years old. It keeps changing. So it is not this change in my appearance which binds us together. It is that imperishable spirit inside us. We are all spiritually interlinked. This is what our thought leaders told us. <coughs> Ekatamta. And more you read Swami Vivekananda. What Sw Swami Vivekananda? I, I, rather, I would put it like this. Indian culture, civilization is an ancient phenomenon. And I have already told you, I do not claim that there were not other civilizations, but they perished. Indian civilization is a continuous civilization. If Paramahans symbolized the Prachinta, the ancientness of our civilization and culture, Swami Vivekananda represented the dynamism the Mirtyun Jeta of our civilization and our culture. He has not claimed any originality. Why his name evokes such positive feelings in the mind of every Indian? If he himself say that I have said nothing original, then why his name evokes such powerful feelings because he reinterpreted our ancient scriptures and classics in accordance with the requirements of the times in which we were living and because we had failed to do that if I use, I don't, I don't have the exact word, but Swamiji has expressed his great, great sadness. He says the religion that you are practicing is found neither in Vedas, nor in Prams, nor in Bhakti, nor in Moksha. You have reduced the religion to don't touch it. He has used very strong words. Actually, the fact is the way we need to clean our body every day and maybe in some places, twice in 24 hours where there is more heat and humidity, you need to bathe twice. Similarly, howsoever precious your intellectual legacy may be, howsoever valuable it may be, if we don't keep reminding ourselves about the basic values of that legacy, then it gathers dust. Customs and rituals acquire the status of religion, whereas religion consists. First, religion is not the right translation of dharma, but I am using it in the proper sense of the term. And honestly, I have already taken a lot of time. More I, more I don't think in any, any of my experience I, in a month's time, since last more than, particularly since 86. How many years? More than, more than almost 38, 39 years. I don't think you will find a single speech of mine without reference to Swami Vivekananda. Not a single speech anywhere without a reference to Swami Vivekananda. And when I think about Swami Vivekananda, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that he personified, he was embodiment of what Bhagavan Krishna said in has said in Gita, 
and he was not only he was not only embodiment of that message. He wanted us Indians to realize that, and that is why he possibly, possibly, he felt so concerned, so anxious about us that he burnt himself. He died so young. Our attitudes, the, 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 the way in which we try to justify every evil, social customs or practices in the name of religion, that saddened him. And he was the man who had said, he could not have lived for himself. He said, those who, only those who live for others, they live. Others are more dead than the dead. Something to that. So he was, what message he wanted to give? I think the most, if you want to convey what message he gave to us Indians. And throughout, and don't, don't ever be under this mistaken impression that he was talking or addressing only us, the Indians. No. He wrote in his letter to Sister Nivedita, my mission is very simple. It can be put in simple words. I want to teach unto mankind their divinity. Not Indians. I want to teach unto mankind their divinity. And its manifestation in all movements of life. For him, and this is the unique contribution of Indian civilization. Where humanity has been divinized and divinity has been humanized. He considered every being potentially divine. So I was saying that when I think about him, when I read him, and somebody asked me to describe him in few words, then these lines of Bhagavad Gita come to my mind. Uddare Atma Atma Na Atma Na Mafsade Atma Eva Hi Atma Na Bandhu Atma Eva Ritu Atma Bandhu Atma Atma Na Tasse Yena Atma Eva Atma Na Jita Anatma Na Kushatrutve Varteta Atma Eva Shatruvat he asked us to develop confidence, to have faith in ourselves. And to know that we are masters of our own destiny. Nobody from outside will improve our condition. And he says, I mean, this has this as this uh, shloka of the Gita, two shlokas of the Gita say that it is only through your, you only yourself are responsible for your growth, for the development of our Atma. And you should not allow your Atma to be degraded. And you should know that it is you yourself who is the best friend of yourself. And you yourself are enemy of yourself. In which situation you became friend of yourself? When your Atma is your Indriyas are totally under your control. Indriya Nigra. And when the Atma becomes your enemy? When it is an Atma when you lose control over it. I hope we will, we will study Swami Vivekananda more. We will internalize his message and then we will develop so much faith and confidence in our own capacity that his words will come to and his words were, I am not a star gazer. I do not believe in making predictions about future. But one thing I see as clear as sunlight that in India, that is Bharat Mata, with new awareness, 
and enthroned with more glory than ever. Then I am sure that that prophetic uh, prediction soon will come to you have are taking more than the time allotted to me. I'm sorry for that, but you have helped me with patience. Thank you very much. Loka Samastha Sukhinavanku, Lord and Lord.